Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, something a little bit different. Uh, if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I've got a, a Mark III, which is down here, and I've got a Prusa Mini. As you can see, the Mini is in its Tukari enclosure at the moment. Uh, the Prusa Mark III is not uh, I've just taken it out of the printer box enclosure that I have. Um, so the one thing I, I need to do uh, in my uh, room that I'm using is actually convert it more into uh, a work area uh, for uh, PC work. So having two enclosures side by side just is not really going to work. I, I need more space. So I've got, let me show you uh, what I've got at the moment. So here you can see that I've got this quite long worktop, uh, filing cabinet, all my storage underneath with uh, various filaments. And then I've got a, a PC desk here. I need a bigger PC desk. So what I'm gonna use is the walnut worktop will be my PC area. And then in the corner, I'm going to have a IKEA floor to ceiling wardrobe. And that's where I'm going to mount the Prusa Mini and the Prusa Mark III. There'll be one on top of the other. So that's arriving shortly and then I'll, I'll show you how I get on. Okay guys, so this is the new layout. As you can see, the desk that I was using for the 3D printers is now being used as an office desk. And just turning around here, we have the new IKEA cabinet. So it's a floor to ceiling unit. So the eagle eyed of you will notice that the cabinet is around about three inches away from the wall. That is because I have uh, mains power sockets directly behind the unit, so I need to be able to get to them. It is secured at the top of the cabinet to the wall, so it's not going to come apart and, and fall over. Temporarily, I've got it mounted on a couple of um, melamine sheets as well. That just means that I can move it around, actually twist it around if I want to access the back uh, or the sides, put, uh, putting extractor fans in. I will eventually take those pieces off uh, and drop the cabinet down, uh, I think two centimetres. Uh, there is enough scope on the batten up there to allow the unit to drop and still be screwed back in. So let's have a look what we've got uh, at the top. <sighs> A nice cupboard there for bits and pieces. Next one, we have a uh, Prusa Mark III. I've just put the smoke alarm in. I've started to put some extra holders for filament, just for storage. And you may be able to just see at the back, I've got a, a uh, hole with a, a little um, cover for the mains cable. Uh, this is going to go in shortly. This is a, a LED strip, but that will be another video. And below we have the Prusa Mini. Uh, lots of space for the Mini. It's uh, a little bit lost there. And another smoke alarm. And finally, another cabinet the same size as the one at the top. And I've got a little section at the bottom here. I didn't have a, enough door space uh, to fit something in, but I've, I'm putting in little toolboxes and things like that in the bottom, so that's actually working out pretty well. Now, IKEA do different versions of their units, depending if you're in the USA, UK, Europe, etc. Now, this one's called the Metod, and it's 60 centimeters wide. I'm afraid I'll do it in metric, but hopefully give you the imperial as well. So 60 wide is the standard. 
Now, a lot of the units they do are only 55 deep. I've gone for a 60 deep, so 60 centimetres depth. That actually gives me, from the back of the unit to the edge here, about 58 centimetres. So when you are doing uh, looking for cabinets, just bear in mind what the internal measurements are. I know one of the uh, popular units is the IKEA Platzer. That's only got a depth of 55 centimetres. Take two centimetres off for the uh, account for the, the rear of the unit, the inset of, of on the rear. It gives you about 53 centimetres, which is probably about the, the, the range when the bed is going forwards and backwards. You'll probably right against the back and right against the door at the front. Talking about doors, I did do a bit of a mix and match on this, so these doors were not designed for this particular unit. As a result, I've had to actually drill holes specifically for these hinges. It was easy enough to do a three, uh, I think I used a three millimeter drill bit to drill holes in there. So they're not fitting in the, the holes that were actually designed. But it's an easy DIY item. And I particularly wanted these glass doors so that I could see what was going on. Uh, these are actually soft closed doors as well. And they come, the hinges come with a little push item there so I can leave the door open if I'm doing PLA, for example, uh, so that I can leave a little bit more ventilation or I can close it. If I push it again, it can pop open. So you can have that facility if you want. So what are the next steps? What, I'm, what am I going to be doing? Well, as you've seen here, little preview, I've got some LED strips. So I'm going to be putting at least one of those up there for some lighting. Uh, possibly more than one I'll see how they go and I'll, I'll do some for the Mini I expect even though that's actually got some LED lighting fitted to the actual Mini itself. I do plan to uh, fit uh, extract fans in uh, that that'll uh, be really useful with the uh, bottom allowing me to move the unit around. This is on carpet so trying to move it around is actually difficult because of the weight it is a very heavy item about 60 kilos if you're on a smooth tiled surface then you won't have any problems there but on carpet just being able to twist it enough to do some drilling etc cut holes that that'll be really really handy so extract fans uh, and hopefully i'll be looking at um, fire extinguisher systems as well uh, it's always commented on uh, especially having a, a wood unit to have some sort of preventative measure. So I'm hoping to get something along those lines as well. So we'll see how we go. Um, oh yeah, what, one other thing I've put is uh, some, if you can see that, it's a very thin but very dense soundproofing material that I've got on both printers to help deaden the sound. And I must say, I'm really impressed with the overall sound deadening of the unit compared to um, the other printer enclosures that I've had. It does make the printing very quiet. I think the sound deadening, which comes on a roll, I'm actually using it in the boot of my car as well, or trunk of my car, uh, to help reduce noise. So that's why I got it in the first place thought it would be good to have it here as well and it has worked pretty well I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to that okay that's enough of me talking and hopefully next time we'll be adding lights and uh, the power units to power those lights and if you like this video please do a like and a subscribe uh, that'd be really appreciated and then we can see how we can carry on with this IKEA build Overall, I'm really impressed with it. It just really has tidied up the room compared to how it was previously. All right, see you in the next video.